when a smartphone company happens to also be a camera company, you can bet at some point, somebody is going to figure out that they can actually use some of that camera stuff in their phones. Well, I suppose this right here is the product of that idea. The I in Xperia Pro I stands for imaging, not I am rich, although this is pretty expensive for a phone. I'll just preface this review by saying this phone costs more than some very decent dedicated cameras, so not exactly cost effective, definitely a luxury purchase in my book. So the phone's got imaging in its name. What's backing that name up is a one inch sensor powering the primary camera. It's the same one inch sensor found on the RX100 cameras, but this one inch sensor is also what's drawing the most amount of flack for the Pro Eye. Specifically how it's not able to utilize all of it. It's only using 12 out of the 20 megapixels present on the sensor, so it's cropped essentially. It's likely that Sony was not willing for the lens to be any bigger than it already is, is, so that 12 megapixel area we're getting is the best the lens can do in terms of image circle. And that begs another question, why not develop a custom sensor for it then? Well, I suppose when you have the option to use that one inch sensor from the RX100s, why not? It's a sensor that's proved itself over and over again, and now you can enjoy those results in an Xperia phone. And those results, I would say, are quite unique to a phone like this. Its biggest charm is how little it does when it comes to processing the images. That might not sound like a very positive thing at first, but what you do get is quite the opposite of what one would typically expect from a modern camera phone. There is minimal tone mapping, you don't get much sharpening applied to your subjects, and the way colors are rendered look far from artificial. This is also evident in the video shot on this phone. It's a very natural looking 4K that resembles the kind of look you would get on a dedicated camera. It's also a tremendous plus that the main camera is capable of doing up to 120 frames per second in 4K. I'd say it takes a certain degree of confidence to put images out to the user with this little amount of processing applied, especially from a phone camera. And I think that's exactly where that one inch sensor comes in. It's capable enough to hold its own without much help. However, the goodness offered by this incredible one inch sensor can only be enjoyed on the 24 mm primary shooter. The 16 and 50 mm cameras are very much supplementary. They do not get the same one-inch treatment, and in video mode, they are limited to 4K 30p. Most of the time, you will find yourself choosing the 24mm because it is that much better. The 24 is also the only lens on this phone that has a variable aperture. It's only got two positions, either f2 or f4, and if you are wondering whether stopping it down gives you sharper images, I personally don't think it's a visible difference with only 12 megapixels. The ProWise minimalistic approach to image processing, while being one of its biggest merits, is also a double-edged sword. It does struggle with dynamic range in high contrast scenes, even with auto HDR enabled, which is exclusive to JPEG by the way. But for stills at least, you do get the option to shoot in DNG RAW. The RAW files do allow you to recover a decent amount of highlights in post. It's not a tremendous amount, but still a very helpful amount for those high contrast shots. In video, there is an HDR toggle which enables you to shoot in HLG. Now, my recommendation, leave this on even if you're delivering in SDR, because shooting in HLG does preserve significantly more dynamic range on the Pro-Eye. Now let's talk about something I don't quite like about the Pro-Eye, and unfortunately that's operating it. It's quite confusing because there are three camera apps. There's Photography Pro, Video Pro, and Cinema Pro. Photography Pro is your only option for stills, but you can actually shoot video in all three apps. Cinema Pro gives you the highest degree of manual control, Video Pro is a slightly simpler version of that, and Basic Mode in Photography Pro actually lets you shoot video in the Stills app. Told you it's confusing. So the basic mode in the Photography Pro app is the closest thing you'll get to a typical camera app on a phone on the Pro Eye. The other modes have quite a learning curve to them. The UI is extremely reminiscent of Sony's Alpha cameras, which is actually pretty cool in my opinion, but the main difference on the phone here is you'll be navigating all of those settings from a touch screen. 
The phone also has a super wide aspect ratio, so photos being in 4x3, you'll have to get used to your preview only occupying a portion of the screen. And despite that real estate, outside of basic mode, there is no on-screen shutter button. While the physical shutter button is delightful to shoot with, it does make the vertical shooting experience somewhat awkward because you're always trying to reach for the shutter button in an odd position. That physical shutter button also serves another important purpose. You can launch the camera simply by giving it a full press. Very useful if you're trying to catch a spur of the moment shot. However, if you're in something like manual mode, you might miss that shot anyway because it takes a while to adjust your exposure settings. For times like these, you do have the option of tweaking the shooting mode at launch setting to always use basic mode. That way, if you ever need to fire off a quick shot, you would already be in full auto mode. And between the two video apps, I tend to always use Video Pro simply because Cinema Pro is not designed for casual shooting. If you wanted to change frame rates or your resolution, for example, it requires creating an entirely new project. The Video Pro app is relatively straightforward by comparison, and when you hit record, you'll even hear a very familiar chime. As a rather familiar user of the Sony Alpha cameras, my only issue with this nice little gesture is how when you end the recording, it still plays the same sound, which is the sound you hear when you begin recording on an Alpha camera. It definitely messes with your head a little because that is not a sound you want to hear when you think you're pressing a button to end a recording. The display on the Pro Eye is one of my favorite things, but also one of my biggest complaints. It's an absolutely gorgeous 4K 120Hz display. It is quite an experience watching full resolution videos on this thing, and it's something you have to see to believe. It is, however, not a very bright panel. If you're shooting under daylight, it is difficult to see what's going on. The live preview you're shown when you're shooting is also not a very high quality preview, so it's something that really does take quite a bit away from the shooting experience because you don't really get to experience any of that image quality until you actually pull up a playback of what you've just shot. The phone also gets hot quite quickly, and the phone knows it. When you launch the video apps for the first time, you get a not so subtly phrased warning message. When the device temperature becomes high, the following icon will be displayed. Do not hold the device directly in your hand while this icon is displayed. Doing so may result in burns. The Pro Eye is a phone that expects you to treat it like a camera. It takes a bit more work to get your results, but it has the potential to be quite rewarding. Also, a lot of what's present on this feels very much like an homage to the Alpha line. For Alpha users, this can almost be like a spiritual companion to your cameras. But having shot with this for the past few months, I still don't think this is the phone you need, but it's probably the phone you want. And with that, I'll see you in one of my other videos.